Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I have my mid-August wrap-up. So if you have been around here a little while, you will be familiar with the fact that I do mid-month wrap-ups because I tend to read around 10 books a month and I do give in-depth reviews, synopses and thoughts, etc. So it's just a lot easier for me and also a lot more pleasant for you if I split my wrap-ups every month into two parts. So these will be the books that I've read in the first half of August. Now I know that over the last week or so I have been bringing you a lot of wrap-ups. Don't worry, this will be the last one for at least two weeks. My July wrap-up was delayed and I split that into two parts so every video I've done recently has been a wrap up but I do have some other different types of content scheduled for you over the next couple of weeks. So as usual there will be no stats in this video, my monthly reading stats will come in my wrap up at the end of the month. In the month of August I am participating in the Elle's Magical Readathon so as we're going through I will tell you which prompt each book fulfills. So in the month of August so far I have read a total of seven books, one of those I can't tell you about because I've been working on it for a project. Don't get excited about that. It's not a secret video project or anything and the results of the project will never be announced on my channel as far as I'm aware unless I include it as like a short segment of a vlog. As I said I'm taking part in the Newt's Magical Readathon. Did I say Owls before? Because I definitely meant the Newt's. I'm taking part in the Newt's Magical Readathon. Of the six remaining books that I can talk to you about, four of them fulfill prompts for the Newt's and two of them were books that I couldn't count for the Newt's because I was already currently reading them in July and I just wrapped them up in August. Aside from that, you guys know how wrap-ups go, so let's get into it. So the first book that I read in the month of August was Startled by His Fairy Shorts by Louise Renison. This one was on my Newt's Magical Readathon TBR and it fulfills the acceptable prompt for Herbology, which was to listen to an audiobook. So if you are unaware, Startled by His Fairy Shorts is the seventh, I think, book in the George Nicholson series written by Louise Renison. It's a young adult contemporary series that is a coming-of-age story told in diary format and it just tells the tale of a very funny young British girl Girl called George Nicholson and the plot is mainly romance centered. There are quite a few love interests in here but it also deals with things like friendships when you're a teenager and navigating friendships when different people in your friendship groups can be absent because of relationships or family things or whatever and just growing up really. This is just a story about growing up. I'm sure you guys have heard me say before that this is my favorite series from childhood although I never did get around to reading the last book and so now I am rereading the entire series so that I can find get to that last book and get some closure on this story because I still have not managed to be spoiled for it even though it has been probably around 10 years since the last book was released so I'm very eager to get to the end and find out what happens. During my reread of this series I have been listening to it via audiobook because the narrator for the audiobooks is the author Louise Renison who passed away in 2016. As I said before this series is told in diary format and in George's friendship group they kind of have a made-up language. They have things like a snogging scale and they just make up random words. So it's definitely very enjoyable to listen to these books being read the way that they were intended to because obviously the author, she wrote them, she knows how this story was meant to be told. And honestly, I don't think that anybody else could have done as well of a job as Louise Renison herself has done narrating these audiobooks. Pretty needless to say, but I did give this book five stars. I've given most of the books in this series five stars. There's a couple of four stars in there. But like I said, it is my favorite series from childhood. It will always be tinged with nostalgia for me. These books don't exactly stand up to the test of time so I would not recommend them to new readers who haven't read this series before but if you have read them before and you are looking to reread them and you're wondering whether you will still enjoy them as much I can confirm that they are still as funny and they are still as good reading them many many years later on so if you have been looking to reread this series then I would definitely recommend it and all of the audiobooks are available on script as well if you want to go that route. The next two books are the ones that I was currently reading in July and June and May for a certain one of them and I just managed to wrap them up right at the beginning of August and the first one is, drum roll please, The Queens of Inneslea by Tessa Grattan. You guys know that I have been reading this for the longest time. I've had people ask me for my review, ask me if I finished yet, ask me whether they've missed my review in my wrap-ups because I've been reading this book for so damn long. But I can finally bring you a review of this book because I finally finished it. So this is a very diverse adult fantasy retelling of King Lear by Shakespeare and in this story we 
we follow the three daughters of King Lear, who are all waiting for their father to announce which one of them is going to become the heir of the island of Lear. So the three daughters themselves are very, very different. The eldest one is very military driven. She is a soldier. The middle sister is very maternal and she practices blood magic or root magic as they call it in here. And then the youngest daughter is the most gentle of the three and she is a star priestess. Now the eldest two daughters think that they have everything figured out and they both wish to rule the island of Leah side by side while the youngest daughter who is actually her father's favourite isn't really interested in being the queen and she kind of just wants to be left to her star prophecies. Now plot wise that is pretty much the basics of the entire plot of this enormous book. Now I did mention that there is quite a bit of diversity in here. All three of the princesses are mixed race and while this is a historical type fantasy so there is no official terminology used, the eldest princess is gender non-conforming if not trans as well as somewhere on the ace spectrum I believe that is what I gathered from reading this. Like I said there is no official terminology so it's not concrete but their pronouns and the title that they make for themselves is very interchangeable. Sometimes they will say they want to be the queen, sometimes they say they want to be the king and they also use both she her and he him pronouns. There is also a little bit of LGBT rep in here. I would say that that is not extremely prominent but there is mention of a male male romance and I swear there's bisexual rep in here. I swear that there is. I need more people to read this and tell me whether they think that there's bi rep in here because I picked up on it at like chapter one and then I felt like it maybe came into it a little bit at the end but I definitely was not sure. So if you have read this book please let me know whether you also thought that there was bi rep because there's nothing confirmed but I feel it. I feel it in my soul. There's bi rep in this book. There are a few trigger warnings in here as well. I may have gotten a few of them so if you are sensitive to difficult topics and I would recommend looking up a full list of trigger warnings for this but the ones that I definitely picked up on are miscarriage and also self-harm in the terms of drawing blood for blood magic. So as for my thoughts on this I did give this book three stars but I definitely believe that it deserves more. The most notable thing about this book is the writing. The writing is prosaical and perfect purple and lyrical and it's absolutely beautiful. Think like Lady Taylor style writing and I did absolutely love the writing style in this and the writing style alone deserves at least four stars. However I could not give this book four stars because I cannot ignore the fact that I struggled like hell to finish this. I started this book at the end of May and I have only just finished it because it was a long haul and the reason that it was such a long haul is that this is an extremely political driven fantasy. It is very slow moving. I would argue that there is not a single action or battle scene in this entire 600 and something page book and because of that even though I was enjoying it when I was picking up and reading it I was loving the developments I was loving the writing I was just not compelled to pick it up I could happily put this book down for two to three weeks and not even think about it because we were never building up to anything I didn't feel like the tension was building it's a very quiet type of tension as well. As I said it's very political, all of the drama in here is very Shakespearean and it hinges on things like loyalty and betrayal and unrequited love and bitterness towards your parents and all things like that. So it is a very much political and character driven kind of book. I love those kind of books and I love slow burn kind of books but I like it when they pay off. An example of this is that I will happily read an 800 page Sarah J Mass book where we have 600 pages of just the characters hanging out together because I know that at the end I'm going to get some payoff and everything that happens will be much more impactful because of those 600 pages. With this book it felt like we had the 600 pages of build up without something that made it all worth it. I mean things did happen in here, there were casualties, it was very dramatic, it just wasn't very impactful to me. That being said there is a kind of companion novel to this being released in January called Lady Hotspur which will be set in the same world in a different timeline and it is a retelling of Henry the Fourth. I think and that book will feature a female female romance. I will be picking that book up and I will be reading it because now that I have an idea of what kind of story I'm going to be presented with I'm assuming that once again it will be very slow and very dramatic. I think that I will be able to enjoy it a lot more knowing what to expect going into it. So long story short I feel like my expectations of what this book would be definitely hampered my enjoyment and if I'd have known how slow it was going to be going in I probably would have rated it a little bit higher but because I didn't I did struggle a lot with this 
this and I just can't in good conscience. Rate this four stars and recommend it to people when I myself took three to four months to finish it. My other book that was left over from July was Catwoman Soul Stealer by Sarah J Maas. This one was on my July Bookopoly TBR and it was a five star prediction. I sadly did not give this book five stars, I gave it four stars but I did very much enjoy it. So this is the third book in the DC Icon series which is a young adult superhero series that follows all different DC icons clearly and each book is written by a different popular young adult author. Now out of the four books Catwoman is the only anti-hero book and also with it being written by one of my favourite authors out of the four books this is the one that I was most excited for. So this follows 17 year old Selina Kyle. Her mother is absent, her mother is an addict and she has a younger sister called Maggie who has cystic fibrosis and is very slowly dying of her condition. So as they have an absent mother Selina is responsible for looking after her younger sister, taking her to her doctor's appointments, making sure she has everything she needs for school but obviously this costs money and Selina being 17 can't earn a decent wage when she is still in school herself and so she joins some of the illegal fights that are run by the gangs. She joins a gang called the Leopards and she makes money from fighting in these underground clubs. Now one day when they are at home a social worker and police officers come knocking and say they are going to take both of the girls away and put them into separate foster homes. Now Selena obviously thinks that her sister deserves to be in a better home than a group home where she can have her particular needs attended to so she does fight back against the police officers and this lands her in jail where a mysterious woman comes and recruits her and in exchange for having Maggie adopted into a real family Selena agrees to go with this woman to an exclusive assassin training school in I think it's in Italy. Now the book of this book does take place in Gotham City two years after those events when Selena has returned for mysterious reasons. Now I did really enjoy this book hence why I gave it four stars. I can't really foresee myself ever giving a Sarah J Maas book less than four stars because her writing style and the way that she writes characters alone are always going to draw me in. One thing I did particularly enjoy about this book is the inclusion of Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy who team up with Catwoman to essentially rob the rich of Gotham City blind. I absolutely loved their dynamic as a trio and I loved that we got a glimpse into the backstories of all three of the women and I just generally loved the badass power bitch trio that was going on in here. As well as that there is a little bit of rep in here. Batman is currently absent when the story is going on and Batwing is left to look after Gotham City. Batwing is POC himself and we also have LGBT plus rep in here and a little bit of mental health rep because we have Harley Quinn who unlike some of the Batman stories where she is just criminally insane. In this story Harley is mentally unwell and there's talk of therapy etc for her to deal with her issues. As far as superhero stories go I really enjoyed this. I know absolutely nothing about superheroes. I don't like superheroes very much and the reason for that is that in superhero stories especially the popular ones like Spider-Man, Batman and Superman there are too many origin stories and so I get confused about canon so I just don't even touch superheroes at all. So essentially the reason that I gave this four stars is pretty much just because it is a superhero story or an anti-hero story in the case of Catwoman and they're just really not my favourite things to read. So the next two books that I read I will talk about together as they are books in the same series and I read Heartstopper volume 1 and also volume 2 by Alice Oseman. So for the Newt's Magical Readathon I read volume 1 for the acceptable prompt for Ancient Runes which was to read a book recommended by a friend and then volume 2 I read for the acceptable prompt for Potions which was to read a friend's favourite book. So essentially what happened is that a couple of weeks ago I went into my library and I found Heartstopper volume 1. Now I wasn't previously really interested in reading it but I'm kind of an opportunist when it comes to my library and I mainly use my library for things like this which are popular books that I would not normally pick up unless I had the opportunity to borrow them from a library or find them really cheap in a charity shop. I did say in one of my vlogs that because I'd borrowed such popular books that I bet at least one of them would have a hold on them and I would have to take it back before I had a chance to read it and lo and behold Heartstopper had a hold on it but as it is a graphic novel with pretty large frames I decided to just squeeze it into my TBR and read it and then I could return it having already read it. Now what I did not anticipate is how invested I would be in this graphic novel. So invested in fact that when I had finished this 260 page graphic novel I immediately downloaded and installed Tapas which is an app where you can read free webcomics and devoured the equivalent of volume 2. I did stop after volume 2 because volume 2 ends at the end of chapter 3 and chapter 4 has been started but has not yet been finished so I did restrain myself and I didn't read any further but I devoured volume 1 and volume 2 in a day. So if you are unaware Heartstopper is a young 
young adult contemporary LGBT romance graphic novel by Alice Osman, who is a young adult contemporary author. Now, Heartstopper in particular is a prequel to her first published novel, Solitaire, as one of our main characters in Heartstopper, Charlie, is the main character of Solitaire's younger brother. And in Solitaire, he is in a relationship with a boy, and then Heartstopper is about how that relationship came about. So in Heartstopper, we follow Charlie and Nick. Charlie is out and has been out for a while. He's in year 10 of high school. Nick is in year 11. He is a rugby player. He's quite popular and he himself does not yet know at the start of this novel that he may be bisexual or gay. Plot wise, this is a young adult contemporary boy meets boy romance. That's that's it. They meet, they become friends, etc, etc. But guys, this is just so adorable. It's so adorable. I loved it so much. I loved Charlie and Nick and their dynamics. I also found this to be so completely relatable. I did discover when I was reading it that even though I thought I'd grown out of young adult romance stories, I don't think that's necessarily true. I do think that I don't relate to them as much as I used to, obviously being quite a bit older now, but I feel like young adult contemporary romances in a US setting I may have grown out of because I can't relate to the setting or the characters, whereas this, which is set in a UK high school, I found to be incredibly relatable. There were things that Charlie and Nick were doing, like they'd stay up all night talking to each other on Messenger and then just the anticipation and one of them having feelings for the other, Nick not knowing what his feelings are because he has not identified his own sexuality yet. And then Charlie having a crush on who he assumes is a straight boy and people telling him like, I know you say you're friends, but you definitely got a crush on him and Charlie just denying it and... <sighs> It was adorable, it was relatable, it was addictive, I loved it so much. This is almost as good as Orange, I did like Orange a little bit more just because we have a lot more complexity in the plot of that with the science fiction aspect, but I think that I found my new favourite niche of graphic novel and it is young adult contemporary romances. And who would have thought guys, who would have thought that that would be my favourite graphic novel genre? Definitely not me, I can tell you that for sure. So in essence, 10 out of 10 would recommend this graphic novel for anybody. You don't even have to buy it. You can read it for free on Tapas. Just install the app and search Alice Oseman or Heartstopper and all of the chapters up to date are right there. But this is something that my old cynical ass did not think I was even going to enjoy and it blew me away. So I would definitely recommend this for any type of reader. It was beautiful. It was adorable and I can't wait for volume three. The last book I've completed so far in August is Dead to the World by Charlene Harris. This is the fourth book in the Sucky Stackhouse series, which is an adult paranormal romance series with like murder mystery thriller aspects in it. That follows Sucky Stackhouse who works in a bar. She can read people's minds. One day a vampire walks into her bar and she discovers that she can't read his mind, which is very attractive to her. Those two start a relationship, which leads to Sucky being dragged into a whole ton of vampire and supernatural politics as her ability to read minds is a desirable skill. So I was told many, many times that this book is most of your guys' favourite book in the series. Bobby told me it had the best shower sex scene she'd ever read and I was generally just really hyped to read this book. I don't love this series. There are a lot of complaints that I have with it but I definitely find the books fun and I find them to be good palate cleansers and I do find them really compelling even though there are things that annoy me. I know a lot of you guys are like hardcore Sucky Stackhouse fans and I get it but from my perspective coming from somebody who reads a lot of high and epic fantasy and complex magic systems and really intricate science fiction. These books leave a lot to be desired in like the perspective of my brain and what I like from a story. So that being said, I don't think I will ever really rate these books very highly even though I am enjoying them because Charlene Harris is writing paranormal romance. I do believe there's more politics and world building that comes in later on in the series but it's paranormal romance. It's meant to be enjoyable, not super complex complex but that is just what my brain expects from any kind of fantastical story. If it isn't a contemporary, if it has a non-realistic or fantastical element, I expect that to be really fleshed out and developed and this is not what we've got here and that's okay. It's just a large part of my issues that I have with this series. That being said, I did enjoy this. It is my favourite book in the series so far. I did still only give it three stars and one of the main reasons I only gave it three stars is that throughout the middle section of the book, like the beginning and the middle, it was enjoyable 
in the paranormal romance aspect, but the mystery plotline was not the most compelling out of the four books that I've read so far. I did absolutely love the romance aspects of this one. We had a lot of Eric, Alcide came back into this, Bill was absent, which we all know is my absolute favourite thing, but the mystery elements weren't all there for me. I did care about the solution of the mystery, but it wasn't like super compelling, like I needed to know what happened. But that being said, it is still my favourite book in the series. I really love the ending of this. The ending was really sad. We had some unique, like very unique circumstances in here, which I felt a little bit weird about, to be honest, starting out, like the circumstances and the way that Suki reacts. And then I'm kind of like, is this an issue? Is this not an issue? But I like what happened regarding those circumstances. And I like what was going on with that whole thing. And then the ending... <sighs> The ending had me sad. It had me sad for Suki, which I didn't think I would ever be, but I felt bad for her. And the way that the circumstances played out for both of the characters involved was kind of perfect because they had this thing which would never have any consequences because of these circumstances. But I felt sad. I felt sad for Suki with how all of this wrapped up. Like I said, I have been told that there are a lot more supernatural politics and also world building coming up in the next books in the series. So I'm definitely excited for that because I've also been told that I will probably appreciate that more coming from from a epic fantasy background than paranormal romance readers necessarily will. And for the Newt's Magical Readathon, this fulfilled the acceptable prompt for astronomy, which was to read a book with a moon on the cover. And then while I'm here, I may as well tell you what I'm currently reading. The first book I only have 130 pages left of, and that is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is a reread for me. It was my favourite book of 2017. I've started rereading the series in anticipation for the release of Dark Dawn, which is released in like three weeks and I am so not ready for that. Needless to say, I am absolutely enjoying it. I think I'm enjoying it even more the second time around. One thing I will say is that I love Trick a lot more the second time around. And if you've read it, you know why that is not a good thing. And then for the Magical Readathon, this one fulfills the Exceeding Expectations prompt for Astronomy, which is to read a book with night in the title. And then the other book that I'm currently reading is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I'm on page 140 of this. I'm buddy reading this with Jade from JD Ray Reads. We are buddy reading the entire a Grisha series. Obviously I won't give you too much information as I'm just letting you know what I'm currently reading but I am loving this so far so I'm definitely going to have some thoughts in my end of month wrap up but I'm really enjoying this. Chapter 2 was a little bit of a struggle to get through but since then I have just been so hooked and I am so desperate to continue. For the Newt's Magical Readathon this one does fulfill the outstanding prompt for Care of Magical Creatures. I have yet to read the books that I have for the Acceptable and Exceeding Expectations prompt but as I am going to Rome in less than a week this was the only week that we could fit in the buddy read so I am going to read the outstanding prompt and then go back and fill in the acceptable and exceeding expectations for care of magical creatures. So that is it for my mid-August wrap-up. Please let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. I'm very excited to bring you reviews at the end of the month of Nevernight and Six of Crows. I think they're both going to be five stars which is very exciting. I have never been so compelled to read as I am right now being in the middle of these two books. So if you are participating in the Newt's Magical Readathon I hope everything is going well for you. But that is about it for this video, so please don't forget to like it if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. If you head into my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my Bookish Body Butter and Candle website, the Instagram for that, and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no